forever. Dog. The unforgettable disaster. This week on the podcast, Diane Ho's Titanic: The Long Night. Welcome to Teen Creeps, the podcast that discusses YA Pulp Fiction. I'm one of your hosts, Lindsay Katai. I'm another one of your hosts, Kelly Nugent, and we are joined today by a very special guest. Uh, You may know him from the Nintendo Cartridge Society podcast. We have podcaster... Mark Mitchell here with us. Hey, guys. Hi. Mark, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Thank you for um, reading this book. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Guys, I'm not going to lie to you. I kind of liked this book. Really? It's, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. It's not bad. and it <laughs> You is, don't have to make me feel better. No, no, no. no. I didn't not enjoy it. That sounds <laughs> like I am fully lying. Okay, here's the thing. I There was a part where I was like almost moved. Mm-hmm. That like when um, Max and Elizabeth, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. <laughs> see that each other has like survived the Mm -hmm. disaster even though it was so improbable such a cop out i hated that part Mm -hmm. here's the thing i was like oh that's like sweet but also like he should have fucking died yes and i thought he did i thought he did because he was because he because she lied described as dying because he was like his last thought was of elizabeth right dot 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 his last thought until (laughs) his 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 next one the cop out was that it was like diane ho saying like speaking from his perspective of like right he hoped that she knew his last thought was of her so it's like well he thought he was dying i know hated it I, mm-hmm. here's that was the bullshit thing. he said he should have fucking died he should have died he should have died. i didn't like elizabeth i, I do not care for elizabeth. oh my god i hated, I hated elizabeth. elizabeth also okay why is why are all of the teens on the titanic so woke <laughs> they're all like feminist <laughs> like because that's what the movie's like. <laughs> and so that's what this book is like. This was like released purely to capitalize on the it movie. Had right? It had to be. I, it had I to be. I thought I read that somewhere. Well, first of all, the reason that we chose this is because A, Diane Ho is a regular author that we Is cover. a regular guest. <laughs> it's a, she's our. <laughs> Diane Ho is our Diane Ho correspondent. (laughs) We always cover Diane Ho books with Diane Ho. (laughs) I see Diane. I feel. So get this. She's written a couple books about the Titanic. Oh, she just loves the Titanic. I think she's very into the Titanic. Because she saw the movie. (laughs) Because she also has Remembering the Titanic. Is that the one that came right after this book? And is a sequel to this book, and no. was released less than a year after this book. No, yeah, okay. Shut your fucking face, Mark. No, I, so I looked. I looked <laughs> Mark, this, how dare you? I, I looked this up. No, the wow. movie came out in 1997. Yeah, right. this book comes out in early 1998. The sequel, following the same characters, comes out in late 1998. So she she knew like. She had a huge hit on her hands. I'm sorry. Are you freaking we got a, kidding we me? We got an epilogue of their futures. How is there a sequel? That would be like doing like another Harry Potter of like. Which it, she is uh, absolutely going to do. Oh, don't do it. Or is you know doing she right is. now. You know she no, JK is. JK Rowling, here's the thing. Stop. A, yeah, stop. A, we're kind of like, you're kind of a turf and I don't like that. Mm-hmm. Well, she's kind of a. Every she's an everything. Thing. Like, yeah. she is a turf in all ways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also, like, you're rich enough, you know? I don't know. Diminishing returns, JK. Yeah. yeah I really don't get it. Me neither. Just be happy. I, I just don't, don't get how, like, she isn't catching on that, like, w- the areas in which she is not woke. She doesn't seem to, she has such a blind spot about them. It's like she gets right up to the edge and then she goes a step too far and we're like, no, 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 no. Yeah. No, no, no. You should have stopped. Right there. Mm-hmm. She would not have fit in on the Titanic. <laughs> or she would have fit right in. Her and Molly Brown. Oh, right. Molly Brown. Why does she have to be in everything? I get it. She's unsinkable. We know that. I would rather watch Debbie Reynolds. There Were there... Okay, hold on. Were there any other people that... Wait, there was Molly Brown. Were there any other like like fe, like older feminist women in this book? Or was it just... I think it's, it was just Molly Brown. 
And she's a feminist in the sense, in this book, in the sense that she has is, money. Well, yeah. <laughs> she's rich and she like yells a and lot. And she like and doesn't have a husband present. Yeah. Her husband's not <laughs> present and she's, didn't she call her at one point like a millionaireess or something? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Probably. Oh, it's the millionaireess Molly, Molly Brown. Brown. Which, what a boring name if you don't say unsinkable in front of it. What I I texted Lindsay about this after I finished, and I was like, well, the, it was a book. And you said the perfect thing about this is that it was very basic. Yeah. This book was very... Basic AF. Yeah. Like, the characters are really funny because they're like, Elizabeth is too woke. I'm sorry. See, she is. I well, found her you... really... Go ahead. Like, annoying in the sense that... Uh, she's so privileged, mm-hmm. right? She's like enormously wealthy, mm-hmm. has never had any problems. And she's not like the kind of sympathetic rich character who's like, I'm willing to throw it all to, all away. She's not Jasmine is what I'm saying, right? No, she's not Jasmine. She's not like, <laughs> she's I'm not. willing to throw it all away and like live just a normal person life. She's mm-hmm. like, no, but I need to be rich to have the life I want to have, yeah. which is fine, yeah. but just not very sympathetic. Yeah. I, I do appreciate that she knows that about herself though it is true it's like a little um, mature after hearing max talk all day about how (laughs) poor he was and how he ate ketchup and water i don't know if that's for me was (laughs) like i think my dad's right was max (laughs) a rich ny nyu film bro yes yes who in my head looks like timothy chalamet Oh, hold on. I need to look this up. I'm really bad with um, names. Tim. He's the he's the pretty young boy who wore the white jumpsuit to the awards. Yeah, he's, oh. he's the waif that was in uh, um, Call, Call Me, Me By, by Your Me Name. Name. Because, I do see him like that. Because he's described, at, Max is described not picture him as uh, very tall and almost too thin. And then later his face was so lean, his cheekbones sculpted so cutely. Elizabeth wondered if he might be starving. You know, in a sexy way. Like Eddie Redmayne. <laughs> in a sexy way. She was... Mm, I love that heroin chic of the... Of 1912. Or when is this? 1912. It only said the date like every chapter. Why can't I remember that? 1912? Yeah. 19... Because it sank... 1912. April all, 14th, right. 1912? April 15th. 15th. I'm looking at... In 1912, yes. Okay. 1912. So... Oh, I was going to say, so the first reason we're doing this book, yes, um, just to get back to that really quickly, is Diane Ho. And the second reason I chose it is because it is on the release date of this episode, the 21st anniversary of Titanic, the movie coming out. Yay. Whoa. So I was like, why not? That's a good idea. Yeah. That's smart. Did mm-hmm. you guys like Titanic? I loved Titanic. I, I loved it. I did saw it not like five enjoy times. It. Oh my god! What did like when you were now? You don't enjoy it, or even then? I haven't you were seen like, it no, since then. Mm-hmm. I, 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 for me, it was like a little too long. Um, and also, I think it was my age. I was going to say, well, how old were you when it came out? Because you may not have had yeah, the attention span. Ninety seven. Ninety seven. So I would have been. Because that made me fifteen. Uh, so you I were a little nine. young. Yeah. Nine. So I think I was just like, also, I think if you watched it now, you'd like it. Here's the thing. Mother wouldn't let me watch it because mother may have watched breasts. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, yeah, Yeah, I get that. Yeah. I mean, also my parents, like anytime anyone even kisses on the TV, they change the channel. So (laughs) it's it's cool. My mom would just cover my eyes and say kissing parts. Mm. She'd go kissing parts. Um, This was like when I was 19. They still would change the channel. Or they would just like really uncomfortably cool. not look at the TV. Oh, yeah. That's what my parents do. My, cool. So when I recommend a movie to my parents mm-hmm. and we like watch it together or something and a part comes up like that that I forgot about, it's very awkward. Yes. Because they're really polite about it. But you, I can tell that they're like, why would you recommend this to us? There's kissing. Yeah. My dad. First of all, my mom, the more normal side of what I'm about to say. Uh, We have just watched so much television together that we're desensitized at this Mm. point. Like, I watched all of the first season of Outlander with her. (laughs) So, like, that's fine. Um, And then on the flip side, my dad, uh, the 
inappropriate version is that he was like, oh, you have to watch this movie. I loved it so much. It's called Zack and Mary Make a Porno. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> and I was like, okay, Elizabeth Banks, uh, Seth Rogen, sure. I watch it. I'm like, no, dad. <laughs> no. <laughs> Bad. Bad. Bad suggestion. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. He- uh, I I loved Titanic when it came out, and I haven't seen it since uh, probably like in theaters. Actually, that's not true. I'm sure I saw it on video at some point when mm-hmm. it was on video. Um, I owned uh, the two two VHS. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I remember that. It was too epic that. for one VHS. Yeah, it was too big because I I'm like big on sentimentality mm-hmm. and uh, spectacle. Yeah, yes. why I love like big Broadway musicals, and it's why I love Titanic. It delivers on both. It does. It holds up too. It's a solid movie. I will give it a try. Uh, like the most dialogue of my isn't very, like stellar, but it's not bad. Mo- most of my like close friends all love that movie. So I'm sure that if I were to watch it now, I would enjoy it. I think I was just I was too like young and yeah. not interested in adult things. Like I was even you know, I was in arrested development like my whole life. So I think even then my tastes in movies skewed young. Um but so this book has Two romances. Ugh. Mm-hmm. Um, lots of talk about icebergs. Constant iceberg talk. Uh-huh. Like, almost any time there is a crew person in a scene, they're like, oh, there might be icebergs. Yeah. But there won't be because the ship is too strong. Yeah. And, or even if there is, won't matter. Were you guys annoyed when they were like, an iceberg hit the ship? Or where they were like, we, the ship hit an iceberg, or rather, a hi- an iceberg hit us. I did not understand that because it's like, no, you guys were moving toward the iceberg. The iceberg mm-hmm. was the iceberg not didn't move it into immovable. your path. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. I I didn't understand it. It was just a, a hubris that I could not understand. I didn't. It was like they were trying to convey like the gravity of what had happened, and I was like, that doesn't do it. It so, just isn't what happened. In the movie, <laughs> I remember this part, mm-hmm. I think. Doesn't, like, half of the ship break off? Yeah. Yeah. The, the like, pressure of it. The, yeah. So does this happen in this book? I don't think it did. Yeah. I think because it Because there's does. that part where it's like, oh, it oh, went it's under and then it snapped. Is that when Max is clinging to the ceiling? Oh, He's clinging the- to the ceiling, and I'm trying to imagine what that is supposed to mean. Like, but, Spider-Man or that, like, the ceiling... Is now oh, the floor. I think it's sideways. Well, here's all oh. I was doing. I think it's sideways. And also he's like running and jumping around. He's like parkouring on <laughs> a sinking Titanic and like holding on and thinking about it. Well, Elizabeth. he's just so strong yeah. and wiry. He's yeah. so he's, he's he's got that hunger strength. Yeah. He has he has definitely like ropey muscles. Like yeah. much like What does that mm-hmm. mean? What are what what is a ropey muscle? Well, you're like thin but cut. You're like a swimmer, uh, so it's you're like, like a piece like, of so like braided rope. Still, is that yeah, what that's yeah. supposed still got those to be like, like? Thin arms, but uh-huh. it's as if your muscles are a rope around your. Arm. Okay, you know what it is. Okay, you know a braided Danish pastry. Oh, it's that the long ones. <laughs> oh, your arms look like that. I get yeah. why it's attractive now. <laughs> yeah, it's because people want to get to the cheese inside. <laughs> like, ooh, what flavor? <laughs> I hope it's cheese. <laughs> so, okay, two things that I liked about this book okay and one of them being the fact that for whatever reason i feel like the movie titanic does not do a great job of like selling the gravity of or like the terror that people would feel because i think it's too focused on like the action and like the romance and i feel like this book for whatever reason like put me in a mental place i was like oh my god this would be horrifying i disagree i think the movie does that really well Mm, I can't speak to it. Huh. When was the last time you saw Titanic? Uh, probably, it came out in 1997, mm-hmm. maybe 1999. Okay, well, I am more the expert, so I'm going to say that I am right. Um, <laughs> it's like, it's fucking terrifying. They're all clinging and screaming to the ship as it's going down. <laughs> like, shots are being fired to keep people from, like, rushing the lifeboat. So, actually, what it felt like to me for pretty much the whole book was that she sat down and wrote the prose version of the movie and then slightly changed the Jack and Rose relationship to be Elizabeth and Max. Well, cause and then like he couldn't threw be a, in a some true, Irish people. Yeah, like he couldn't be a true poor. No. He no. had to be like, because I was like, oh, of course. Like she's going to be with him because he's like actually like rich. And then 
Um, Because what I was hoping for was like splits or I was kind of shipping Katie and Elizabeth because every time Elizabeth sees Katie, she's like, my God, that girl is beautiful. Her fiery red hair. (laughs) Uh Oh, my God. I can't stop staring at her. Yeah. And then, of course, nothing. Same with Katie. Yeah. Oh, there goes that pretty girl in the blue. Oh, she looks so amazing. And they're both of them just like hoping for the best for one another. And I was like, why aren't you <laughs> talking? Why are why isn't this friendship materializing? You won't stop talking about it. They no, all they do is have like very long, like Carol type glances at each other across the room, like intense eye contact and like that is nodding. Dead on. Yes, and and they don't ever like really like acknowledge each other, do they? They're always They're twice like, at the end. They, oh, at mm-hmm. the end, they like like s- slightly smile, and I think there's like a minor nod. Like she's like, yes, like you found your man, and I found yeah. mine. And then the the whole part where like Max helps the children. Oh yeah, oh, I course. forgot about like, that. Oh, that's where they like yeah. truly interact. Um, I couldn't believe that they didn't become friends. I was fucking shocked. I was expecting Katie to die. A hundred percent. I thought Katie was going to die. I thought I, she was going to die thought, for sure. Because I thought she did, all three of the poor's were going to die. Me too. Because like yeah. Katie d- didn't have a lesson to learn, right? Like no, she right. was basically just like great the entire time. Yeah. So she seemed doomed to die. So that way Elizabeth could like learn from it or something. Right. Yeah. Well, because then she could be like, oh, like... That I girl, should live as a poor as well. Yeah, that girl didn't appreciate her poor life and she died. <laughs> Maybe I'll... Maybe I should, I should appreciate poor, my rich or, life yeah. since I have it. Or mm-hmm. that girl appreciated her poor life, so I should also be poor and not the, be afraid of it. Elizabeth would never be poor. She's never going to be poor. <laughs> no, she will never and, be poor. No. We know that she doesn't because there's an epilogue and it's like, yeah, she went to Vassar and then she was headmistress yeah. of the school and she married Max and they were both fine. And I, they never had kids, um, but they. she thought all of the so students weird. were like her kids. Yeah. I thought that was so weird. It was what? so specific. Same with, I... I I genuinely loved that Katie's was like, she went to New York, found she didn't really like it. And that so she moved insane. back. I know, she goes, she goes her back. entire dream was, was like, to be a singer in New York. I can't believe you would do this to Katie. <laughs> this, it, it felt like such an injustice. Cause okay. First of all, we get a taste of what Katie's singing is like, and it, tears the house down like yes at, like the titanic almost sinks because people are like clapping so hard yes. she's like singing like that might be what brought the iceberg out from the deck because <laughs> it was standing yeah, away to hear her sing <laughs> that's how that's how the iceberg hit them yes. yeah yeah instead of them hitting oh, the yeah. iceberg that, it, was, it, was, it was like coming like, music for, <laughs> it was like encore performance <laughs> question mark yeah so do you want to read the back of the book sure um or we can just go through it. Uh, sorry, I have to grab a Goodreads. Sorry. I sprung that on you. No worries. Basically, just imagine the movie Titanic. And then instead of Jack and Rose, uh, you've got Rose, but she ma- meets a rich Jack. And they have the exact same storyline, but he doesn't die. And then imagine that all the poors that can't get out from uh, steerage, is that what it's called? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Imagine that like... Two of them did get out, and they both lived, and and then went back to Ireland at some point. Do and you, that's the that's the book. That was better than what I found on Goodreads. <laughs> Do you want to hear what I found on Goodreads? This action-packed big summer read focuses on the lives of several teenage passengers aboard the ill-fated Titanic. Period. Uh, cool. True, I guess. <laughs> yeah, not inaccurate. Not false. No, I'm gonna see. But yeah, that's that's the book. Like Katie. Is from Ireland. She's traveling there with two brothers, Brian and Patty. And she really likes Patty, but she's pretending she doesn't. And Patty thinks that she's Brian's girl, but Brian likes this Swedish girl that Katie introduces him to on the boat. And eventually they both realize that they're in love with each other and it's fine. Okay. For despite the fact that we earlier said that Katie is maybe perfect the whole time, Mm -hmm. she is. Very dumb when it comes to Patty. Yes, like that was very annoying. Intensely, like, like Willie, like willfully putting blinders on about what Patty's misconceptions were. It was so obvious. Like, just fucking say it. Like when he was like, so he would. So it's and Patty. Then why and Brian. wasn't he accepting that answer? That I know, was crazy. that was so weird. As it well. was crazy. Yeah, he was just like, oh, I know you're just trying to protect your heart. Like, protecting your pride. I get it. You're prideful. I respect that. She's that like, conversation no, made me We are me not scream. together. 
she's like she's like i'm not with brian and he's like i know it's because he's with marta and she's like no i've never been with brian i don't like he's brian like, god you're so brave you're so brave you're such a brave soul he's for- like i know that oh, you're just wow. trying to protect my brother your is such a cad and then she's like I have no interest in Brian. I'm not with him. I'm going to take care of myself. And then he's like, um, he's like, yeah, I know. I knew you would say that. And then she's like, oh, you're worried that Brian's going to be all alone in in the United States. Why? And I was like, no, no, Katie, he you likes know. you. <laughs> you dang. He likes you and you like him. It made no sense. Also, at no point does she say, no, you fucking idiot. I introduced Marta. To Brian. She could have yeah. just said that. I looked at her and I was like, oh, she's Swedish and into farming and will be in Wisconsin. I think that's close to Minnesota because for some reason I have a pretty good idea of the Midwest in America, even though I'm Irish. I will introduce them. That conversation between Patty and Katie was so belabored that I thought yes. that I was missing something, that there was some like twist. Yeah. That like, no, you don't understand like... Brian's not moving to Wisconsin or whatever. He's going to be with you in New York. New York, like, yeah. Something that I didn't like, like a reveal. Yes, that Brian took so was long. in love with you. Yeah, or yeah. something. That's but what I thought no. there was, where he was like, oh, Brian is in love with you. But then Marta came in the picture and I was like, I guess Brian's not in love with her. Yeah. Also, poor Brian. I mean, he was doomed, right? Absolutely. So very doomed. So doomed because he's way too boring and not and handsome he, enough. And he like... He loses Marta. Oh, so sad. And then Marta loses him. They were in love after two days. They were in love. I know they were in love. It's like we're going to inflict pain on the characters, but (laughs) the unimportant ones that are just really bland. Guys, what does Patty look like? Is he ever described? I got to say, when Patty was first introduced, I was sure he was 12. (laughs) How old is he? How old is he supposed to be? He's like, he's two years younger than 20. So he's, oh, 18. so he's 18. So what is that? <laughs> he's, he's so uh, one he's 20 minus two, two nine minus 20 minus two. Does somebody have yeah. 20 somethings we can put on the table and then take two away from? This is like all the older stories we read where it's like he was five and 20. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like well, he was 20 less two. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I remember they were like, um, uh, cause she's talking about how the only reason she's allowed to go to, um, to America at all is because Brian's going and her dad trusts Brian and Brian is 20. And Brian, Brian, Brian. Brian, Brian, Brian. But I like, I was thinking that Patty was, I kept thinking he was younger though because of the way he was acting on the ride to the boat. Oh, yeah. That's what I mean. I was like, he's 12. Yeah. And he's a a little scamp. Yeah. Who like hates girls because he's 12. I pictured him dressed like a little Irish boy with like a newsy type cap. <laughs> and yes. Like, in my head, the entire time, especially like w- I pictured Samwise Gamgee <laughs> <laughs> from the Lord of the Rings movies. Yes. That's how I imagined him talking. That's how I imagined him acting. Yeah. Like he was Samwise for me. I could see that. I Here mean, it he- is. Here's why I'm so confused. Uh, but it was truly Brian Kelheller, Kel- Keller, her whatever irish she must thank for this journey she wouldn't have been allowed to go if brian nearly a grown man at 20 hadn't agreed to go along and seek his fortune as well according to katie's da who had worked alongside brian on the farm for two years now brian was a strong steady bloke and that's the truth of it of course she hadn't known that brian would be bringing along his younger brother patty and it's p-a-d-d-y which just sounds so so childish patrick kelheller think i keep pronouncing that crazy for some reason was as different from his older brother as a sheep from a cow katie had never taken to patty a true rascal especially with girls everyone knew it brian was quiet like her but patty wasn't and then she found to her surprise she was grateful for patty's light-hearted company during the trip he was a master at keeping their spirits up during the long taxing trip and that was the truth of it he sang while they traveled first by wooden cart told jokes when they rode next in the back of a lorry, played pranks on Brian while they traveled on foot. During that tiring trek, their luggage became so burdensome, Katie thought her back was going to break. Patty took the luggage from her, carrying it along with his own, until they were lucky enough to hitch a ride on another lorry. Patty was a rascal, but he was good company. And I was like, oh, there's like this red-haired 12-year-old like boy, child. <laughs> like, praying little breaks on his older brother and like Ma, I'll help you and she's like oh usually you put frocks under girls chairs or whatever yeah. mm-hmm. but you're being so sweet to me you tiny little boy well the idea of like her and also she's like she was good with the wee ones so like I thought she was just like 
<laughs> nannying Patty. It's, it's like there are so many indicators that Patty is like 12. Yeah. But then it turns out he is he's Strapping. a honey. He's fine. He, he is, is like Gaston, but nice. Yeah. <laughs> like too yeah. nice. A little bit too Unbelievably much. Unbelievably Also, nice. I didn't buy that he was a ladies' man. No, he not did at nothing all. to indicate he was a ladies' man. No, it's not even like Katie changed him. It's just like, no, you're wrong. Yeah, <laughs> you I, she's the straight wrong up wrong impression. Because like he talks to girls, sure, but like, yeah, okay, yeah. We just take Katie's word for it. Yeah, and the we moment, never see him do anything that's no, not in the slightest. The only person he kisses is her. <laughs> Katie, what's your fucking deal? Yeah. Also, why is that the response he has to like? Sh- so, oh, it's this God, scene this where moment. like they're having a good old time down in steerage, um, which is still very very nice. And this group of rich people come down, and Elizabeth happens to be in the group. Oh, God. And the rich people are gawking at them like they're animals oh. in the zoo. And Katie gets super pissed, and she's like, "Get the fuck out of here! Why are you showing us off like we're?" Like we're in a zoo or something. Yeah. And then Elizabeth is the one who breaks them off. And she's like, this is wrong. I told you I didn't want to come down here. And Katie's like, oh, she's pretty and nice. And this is the first. It's yeah. not even the no, first. No, it's not the first date. Because Elizabeth, Elizabeth her saw her on. from like across the <laughs> ocean. So and she enough. was like, her hair is so red. Her <laughs> hair is so fire. beautiful. Yeah. She's it's- who are those boys she's with? I wonder what her whole story is. I know. And she's like, oh, just the way she carries herself. It's just so confident. And like, I just wish they, I were like her, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But I'm then, like, no. And then Katie sees her and she's like, who's that pretty girl in the blue who clearly doesn't want them to do this? Well, she's certainly somebody to admire. Thank you, strange, pretty girl. They are and so then, in love. They're so in love. And yet, they cannot take their eyes off each other that's why but, i wanted so, them to get together but they no didn't but that's crazy <laughs> that's it's the such weirdest a waste. part of this book it's such a waste it's such, it's a, such waste. a waste because they have the most chemistry out of anybody out of Absolutely. anybody max sucks i'm sorry max, is boring. max first of all he lectures her too much yeah oh, real quick before we go back to max is just that like when patty gets mad about them watching oh him yeah too he like to like say like fuck you to them he's like you want a show I'll you want- give you yeah. a show and then he kisses Katie <laughs> yeah it's like, like max what? on her and then and then he's like oh sorry Brian and we're all like why are you apologizing to Brian that was the moment where I was like oh he thinks Brian likes her yes yeah. and she's like why is he th- saying that to right. Brian I know but th- it that moment also bugged me because it has my least favorite trope which is where uh, like somebody gets kissed and they're like, I hated it, but then I loved it. Yeah, yes. I hate that. I hate that. And I also hate too where, and this is one of my least favorite tropes too, where people like are not attracted to each other and then they have to kiss for some reason and then they're like, oh my God, you're hot. And it's yeah. like, you and didn't know I that suddenly, before? I have never, yeah, ever in my life come to be attracted to somebody. Yeah, where it's no. like, it is always immediate yeah and then i just like all growing up i was never i had zero chill i was just like if there's a cute boy in the room i desperately hope that he falls in love with me tina immediately <laughs> yes i was <laughs> tina belcher i am tina belcher yeah it's very good that i have a boyfriend now because i would be doing that to this day of just mm. like wow i hope any literally any boy in this room is instantly in love with me <laughs> yeah so the idea that it would be like, oh, I suddenly, this very handsome boy who's been nice to me this whole trip, because I thought he was a ladies' man, I was feeling nothing. I was feeling nothing at all. But now that we've kissed, I'm feeling everything. Like, I feel like I'm home in his arms. It's like, but girl, I can't feel that way because he's Patty. Like, and but, we're supposed to be like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The ladies man <laughs> that we all yeah, see girl, so much. Don't let him break your heart. Like she would already have liked him. You already like she attractive already, people. She already <laughs> likes attractive, him. you're attractive, you like them. <laughs> Here's the thing. I think maybe she's like, OK, why don't we rewrite this? So okay. she's feeling hot and bothered because of the intense eye contact with Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Who is the person <laughs> she loved on contact. Like yes. eye contact, they That's see each true. other, and she's like, "Yes, 
Yes. You're awesome. I'm yeah. all about that uh-huh. girl. And she's like, oh, she's so beautiful. And then, of course, she's thinking that about her. Oh, she's like being so like uh, empathetic. That's great. Um, and then, you know, Elizabeth's like, oh, my God, she's got some moxie to her. They're staring at each other. And then like Patty, Patty kisses, kisses her. her and she like transferred. Yes. Like she's like, oh, I'm already in the moment. And like now I'm kissing you. So I guess like, oh, it's I was, you. I was already full of sexual tension. Yeah. And now. It's You're breaking it, uh-huh. and so it's on you now. Yeah, he's just the straw that broke the, the camel's only back. explanation that makes any yeah. sense. Because otherwise, when you see a handsome man, yeah, you're attracted to them. And here's the thing: you can. That's just how it works. And you can also be like, "Oh, I'm attracted to this person, but I would never be with them because they're a ladies' man." Mm-hmm. But here, she was like, "I've never." She she was not attracted to him before. No, no, and you don't even like. You just have to not be hideous. Like, all growing up when I was a teenager, oh, yeah. it's like, if you're not hideous, you are my type. And yeah, no, all, me too. And, like, the barometer for not hideous when you're a teenager is all over the place. Oh, like, yeah. All yeah. over yes. the place. There's no rhyme or reason. No. no. You're just like, oh, are you, like, like basically, if someone is, like, normal, even below, like, if someone is, like... I don't know. Like if you well, I if you think... could talk to me and tell me I was pretty, then I was like, <laughs> you're my type. Yeah, that's the thing. Yes. Is like I like for me anyways, the guys that I thought were cute were like all over the place. Like like looking back on it, very nice people, but you're like, oh, oh. <laughs> that's, that's what same. I was gonna that's say. Same, same, if same, I same, think same, of somebody same, same. I had a crush on as a teenager, I'm like, but why? Yeah, yeah. Well, th- that that's why I think that Max is not conventionally attractive. No. Okay. Max is a goon. Yeah. Yeah. Who uh Elizabeth just likes, which is great. A sandy sure. haired goon. Uh-huh. Right. With like bushy eyebrows yeah. and yeah. really big eyelashes. But yeah. Patty is guest on. Yeah, Patty for- Patty is hot as shit. Because it gets described better. Once we know he's not 12. And <laughs> 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 I'm like, oh, okay. Whereas like Brian could literally be like a popsicle stick with a cotton ball on the end. And I would believe it. Like, I had he no could idea. Be stick stickly yeah. from Nickelodeon. Yeah. I had no idea who, like, what he looked like, what his deal no, was. No, I don't know. None at all. Yeah, because it was so he's unimportant. He's probably hardy because he's a farmer. Oh, <laughs> that's true. So he's probably not a popsicle stick. He's like a baguette. Yeah. Okay. But not a baguette because he's Irish, so soda bread. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's like, um. Yeah, he's a big old slab of slow yeah, soda bread. He's just like an he's a upright, big old upright of soda, of soda bread with googly eyes. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it's not even like it. with raisins or anything in no. it. It's plain. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, d- she would have liked him immediately. Immediately. Oh. From the second that she okay. ever knew him. Hey guys, Kelly here. Wanted to take a quick break from the show to talk to you about one of our sponsors, Everlane. Lindsay and I love Everlane. The clothes are ethically made. It's high quality material. It's all styles and looks that are not only on trend now, but are classics and are going to last for a long time. Every time I wear my Everlane stuff, I look good. I feel good. I look like I'm famous. And I'm happy to buy from a company that's transparent about how much it costs for them to make the clothes that I'm buying. You wouldn't buy a t-shirt for $50 if you knew it only cost $7 to make, right? Neither would we. And with Everlane, you never overpay for quality clothes. Everlane only makes premium essentials using the finest materials without traditional markups. And they tell you their real costs so you know you're never overpaying. Everlane wants you to know what you're paying for and why. They are radically transparent about every step in their process from the materials they use to the ethical factories they work with. And because Everlane sells directly to you, their prices are 30 to 50% lower than traditional retailers. Everlane's clothes look better, cost less, and last longer. Essentials like their Cotton Crew t-shirt are exactly what they should be. Simple, stylish, and made from quality materials. What are some products that I enjoy? I love me the straight leg crop in golden brown, the Renew Long Puffer in brick, Or, because it's sweater season, the cashmere rib v-neck in black. Everlane's timeless essentials are just what you're looking for. No frills, just quality. And right now, you can check out our personalized collection at everlane.com slash teencreeps. Plus, you'll get free shipping on your first order. That's E-V-E-R-L-A-N-E dot com slash teencreeps. Everlane.com slash teencreeps. And now, back to the show. Another trope I hate of 
is is the oh, I can't stand him mm-hmm. of Elizabeth Elizabeth like, with Max like Max did nothing to her no nothing whatsoever she mistook him for a poor and tried <laughs> to just she get him like, to go to third stuck class him in the nearest elevator she was like he doesn't he doesn't speak english this person is so <laughs> stupid i'm not, doing a kindness i mean but like why wasn't he answering i was <laughs> why so, aren't you saying anything i know we were supposed to be embarrassed for her and i was but i was also just like laughing so hard imagining <laughs> and she's like oh like she's like oh my god i need to do no one here is helping him and he's just like staring at her <laughs> non comprehending <laughs> like, anything like the fact that he could keep a straight face for that long i think he should have pursued acting and, and um and maybe got some advice from lily the italian actress what the fuck was her deal <laughs> Did she grow up in France, an Italian yes. actress in France? In France. Her life actually, she sounded, she was the most interesting character, I think. She would have been played by, um, fuck, uh, in My Cousin Vinny, also the uh, Aunt, Aunt Maria, Mary. Oh, um, and, um, Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. A young her. I feel like she would have been her. Fuck. What's her name? Uh, Wait, what's she what People she are saying? screaming it right now. <laughs> okay. Looking it up. Spider-Man Homecoming. Wait, which one? She won Best Actress for My Cousin Vinny. Oh, Marissa Tomei. Yes. yes. I felt I'm like sorry, a young... I was looking for the moment when Elizabeth <laughs> sticks Max in an elevator to steer it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, a teenage Marissa Tomei... Uh, Gorgeous. Uh, Would have played Lily, I think. Gorgeous, yes. Yeah. Love does it. Lily survive? Lily survives. Lily survives. Arthur doesn't. Arthur doesn't. Who okay, has, Arthur. There is no <laughs> description of Arthur. <laughs> who, Arthur. Who, is, just who like, is Arthur? Which one is Arthur? It's the one that Lily just randomly meets when they Lily go to like dinner at the oh. restaurant. They go to the cafe. That finally set, yeah, the separates ca- Max cafe. from Lily. Yeah. Uh-huh. The sidewalk cafe. It just like gets rid of Lily so yeah. that we no longer consider her a threat to Elizabeth. Yep. <laughs> Nothing is said about him. Okay, I will Nothing. tell... Here, I'm like, who is this person? No, no, no. He was like, li- he, God, what could he, he could have been like a mound of pa- mashed potatoes. Like, I feel like he could have been. I was but picturing. But like a rich mound of mashed potatoes. Rich, I was picturing just rich. like a tweed jacket and bow tie and like zero about his actual He's person. like a thumb <laughs> yeah. wearing an outfit. Yeah. He's a thumb <laughs> wearing an outfit. <laughs> um, oh, I, I forgot he had existed. Yeah, you didn't know who he was. But he's like the one character that dies other than Elizabeth's father that we like know about. Right? Yeah. Oh, I guess Brian. I just feel like all the deaths were like completely, you were just like, huh. Inconsequential. I was really sad when she was leaving her dad and talking about leaving her dad. I was sad. Oh, like when they were like lowering on the boat? Well, before when when they were talking about uh having to leave him, I was, and when they were lowering the boat, I was getting um, emotional during that part and i was like please don't cry at this book Lindsay." and so i didn't and i kept no because i actually really did like like i said earlier like i was like uh maybe maybe it's because i've like not old but i'm getting older and like death is on my mind all the time now me too, me too. <laughs> and so and so i was like oh my gosh this would be like this really it the realities of the sinking of the titanic hit me reading this book in a way that it has never hit me before yeah and i don't know i don't think it was the beauty of the prose that did it I think it was just like it coming into my I life. I think it was at this just time, your empathy. Like, like, yeah. Well told. Yeah. It wasn't like so moving, but like if you're an empathetic person, you're putting yourself in that like state. Situation. Of mind. Yeah. And you're you're just putting like, yourself oh in that God, story. Like this really would have been horrible. 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 And like I, I got sad when, yeah, when uh, her dad is basically like, she she's like, are there not enough lifeboats? And he's like, no and like that part i was a little sad and also just thinking about the facts of it and like putting myself there and imagining having having to go through it i was getting a little misty like when they said 1500 people died i was like what the fuck are you imagine like the panic of not being able to like get on yeah a boat or not knowing do you know what i think was like earlier i was like oh the movie titanic like it it was action focused i think because the last time i saw it i was like 13 and you didn't have empathy (laughs) so and i was gonna live forever (laughs) yeah and you you were just focused on the action exactly but now i'm turning to dust yeah before our very eyes and so it's like oh my god people are jumping into the boats 
and there's this there's this part where somebody like tries to leap into the boat and they almost don't make it and they're about to fall in and it knocks the boat and everybody's screaming and trying to get it see somebody like what i remember is like gun. the man like hitting the propeller oh i remember that oh i forgot about that that's horrible <laughs> that's like what my like 14 year old brain <laughs> Is like no, Whoa. yeah, and then just the screams as the as the like last part of the ship is just like going into the water. It's terrifying, and Jack is like, "Hold on to something," and they're just like, Whoa. The thing that I n- remembered about the movie that didn't they mention it in here, but they don't fixate on it as much that the gates were fucking locked yeah. on yes. the third class passengers. That was the scariest part of the movie. To that me. they were like literally trying to keep them in there so that way there would be enough boats for everybody else. But uh, what I thought was so interesting about that in the book, because you're right, they don't belabor it at all. Is like it is of no consequence really to N- Katie nope. and. Uh, they Patty find a and door. like Brian, like they're just like <laughs> they. The, the, uh, I, but I talked to the guy and he let me through. Yeah, you it's know? just like oh, he's a uh, seaman, and they're like, great, cool, bye. <laughs> I'm know. too tired to argue with you. Is like I, also, you I was so mad at the nanny. Oh, Eileen! I was fuck. so mad at Eileen. <sighs> Eileen was very bad. She abandons two children that Katie then nearly. Like risks her life to save, and Katie's like trying to get them on the boat, and Eileen's like, no, no. like I, I, they're not my kids. Like and, I, and, I, I don't like, want to. It's crazy to me because like Eileen, I have them. I'm just right saying, here. Right. let them on the boat. You and she's don't like, have to. They're not mine. I don't have to do anything. It's like, but I'm pre- like, it's I like know you what, don't. I'm not We're, even I'm, saying get off and go find them. I'm just saying here they are. I don't even hand them. I don't even have to hand them to you. I can hand them to the person and next to you. Literally anybody. Yeah. Just and also, like the only thing is that you know where they're supposed to go when they go to America. Right. So, like, literally, like, tell someone. Yeah, like, that's literally it. Like, just land with them yeah like no one's saying they have to be your kids no one's saying that like you don't have to like them and she's I'm not like, even no. saying give up your spot on the boat <laughs> no, there's right. plenty of room eileen get it the fuck together also, for two seconds also you were cheating on your fiance yeah, on this boat oh. with a on tall your fiance, with man. that tall swede also she was eileen like, no she was oh like, to be fair international waters True, oh, true. Vegas, Vegas of the ocean. <laughs> um, Vegas, Vegas of the ocean. Titanic. What's the Vegas of the ocean? The ocean. The Vegas <laughs> of the ocean. <laughs> she, so she, yeah, she's busy flirting it up with this tall blonde Swede while one of the children just like, first oh, yeah. of all, what are they doing? <laughs> They're are they building doing? a tower of boxes that's very, very tall. Mm-hmm. And then a kid like jumps off, like swan dives off the top. And it, and it's, and it has Bridie. to be, it's like, Bridie just like, yeah, she just like, <laughs> falls back. Falls. She just, yeah, falls backwards. Bridie. The boxes have to and be like, tall enough that Patty has time, enough like time. Seconds, seconds to realize what's happening and like dive and, like, and still I catch her. I think she says she's going to hit the ground head first. <laughs> so she's just <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait. So it's uh, falling feet. Per second. I want to calculate how fucking tall this thing was. <laughs> okay. Okay. So um, it's gravity accelerates any object at a rate of 32 feet per second per second. 32 feet per second so, per second. <laughs> so this is the thing. The first second is 32 feet. The second second is 64 feet. The second second is that plus 32 feet. Bridie's going to die. Bridie? Bridie straight should die. Those were a lot of boxes. Steerage was huge. Huge. Also, like, okay, at the speed (laughs) at which she's falling, by the time Max catches her, his arms should have just fallen off. (laughs) Oh, wait. Patty? Patty. 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 I'm so sorry. Because we had to understand that although it seems like he's a ladies' man, he's a hero. Save and we're like, cat. we already knew Save that. The cat. Save Patty. the falling child. Save, Save the, the plummeting child. But we already knew it was great. We did. <laughs> Nothing had been established to make us doubt for a second. He's a ladies' man. That Patty was Lindsay. <laughs> women she, like he's him. Breaking hearts. She had to give her sad friend a glass of milk and soda bread. Yep. And also, <laughs> Do like, you not remember that? He broke up with someone before. Yeah, that oh, means you're right. a ladies' man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you've broken up with someone, and she had to pick up the pieces with a glass of milk and soda bread. 
And I mean, even then, he like explains it. He's like, no, I broke up with her because she wanted to get married. And like, I want to go to America and be a writer. I can't stay here and get married. And she's like, still, you're a ladies man. <laughs> it's also like, I just like didn't feel the same way. She's like, a heartbreaker. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I can't do that to myself. How could you? I, um, it kind of bugged me a little bit how many times they said, find your fortune. I went to New. Uh, I'm going to America to find my, my fortune. fortune. How many people really did that? Went to America to find their fortune. Like, isn't it like most of, of most it, Americans like, are descendants of people that, that, did way. that No, I mean like <laughs> thought of it that way. Oh, it's I like, see. Like, I understand. Like, oh, there are better job opportunities there. But to keep phrasing it, find yeah, my that's what I mean. fortune. Yeah, it, it was that like such like a. Are you gonna get there and like? become a land baron like what do you yeah. think is gonna happen katie it's just i did like, like that she was going with the dream of becoming a singer yeah. yeah that she it wasn't like oh i'm gonna go and like i don't know work in a laundry or yeah. just try to find a job it's like no i'm gonna be a star yeah i know i like that confidence and she has, like i did no too. star quality no she, she is, is so extremely clearly just beautiful like, she is extremely, extremely beautiful, beautiful but she is also very like salt of the earth she is she is like you need a little bit of edge to be a star. Yes. You need Salt that star Earth quality. People, mm, yeah, don't that didn't say qua. stars. No. Yeah, she no. doesn't have it. No, and I mean, she didn't. She went back. No, <laughs> no yeah, she gave up and went back. She gave See, up. I'm right. She teaches music lessons <laughs> to right. children. Yeah, and it's like in like regional theater. <laughs> yeah, I did I like that, that she's in community theater. She's in like local plays when she's uh-huh. not starring in local plays. She is teaching yeah. theater. I mean, she I would mean, singing. She'd be a killer Miss Hannigan. I think she'd be great. <laughs> who is Miss Hannigan? Uh, the in Annie. Yeah, in Annie, oh, the woman who runs the orphanage. <laughs> oh, you're kind of aging her up a little. <laughs> well, it's no. community theater. You can do what it's you true. can. You can do what you can, and you know that's who's all you gonna have. Play that part is Eileen. <laughs> Eileen is the Miss Hannigan. (laughs) Okay, watch. She hates little girls. They're holding her back. (laughs) Can you imagine? So Katie's like, Katie's uh, walking out and they're like, ah, fuck. You know, we just, we had to get a last minute understudy and like all the other understudies just didn't work out. So we just really quick did like a quick audition out here and this person knows all the lines and then she walks out and it's fucking Eileen. And she's like, she's like, oh my God, you ditched some little kids on the fucking Titanic and you're back here. That's the kind of je ne sais quoi it takes to be a star. Here's Looking yeah. out for number one. Eileen yeah. would make it. Yeah. America, she she's would. cutthroat. I think Eileen would be famous. Eileen has the drive. She does. Because she will step, she will d- let little she children got, die. Like, thrown out of bed and she's like, bye. Yeah. I did like that she I just did them and katie's just like i wonder where she is for a second no she went out she's like oh this boat had an accident no thank you and just ran away yeah katie would be like oh, i'm not gonna go to this audition because my friend's gonna go and i want her to get the part <laughs> she's so right for it uh, yeah i'm not gonna Eileen go to this audition like the, like, because gl- like i found this homeless kid on the street <laughs> and i just need to make sure that they get a good bed eileen has stepped on like 12 homeless children on the way to the audition <laughs> She will like she would like she would poison someone. Oh yeah, to she's, get put, a part. she's putting oh, glass yeah. in the point shoes. She's yeah. doing it all. She she's, is the Elizabeth Berkeley of showgirls. <laughs> oh, she just kicks G- Gina Gershon down the stairs or yeah, something, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. I love yeah. showgirls. <laughs> she uh, she reminds me of like a villain in um she's like maybe the killer in an episode of Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries. Like she's <laughs> Oh, like, absolutely. Like, fabulous like complete star quality maybe like an aging version of her i think i like that she started out just like this nice girl from ireland with a fiance named sean who's like she loves her fiance just taking these kids across the ocean just to bring them to their parents just because it's good money and then she can like you know use that to get married and then on the way she like is drunkenly making out with people and it's like get out of my way there's boats i have to (laughs) fuck this i am not gonna die for these kids this reminds me of have you ever seen was it like broke down palace (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, is that the cl- movie with Claire Dane? Yeah. Yeah. Where they end up in like prison? a Thai prison. <laughs> My mom is going to Thailand and Cambodia over Christmas. I'll have her watch it. And I'm like, please don't become a drug mule yeah. because I have seen Broke Down Palace. Yeah. <laughs> I just feel like she would get into some shit in Broke Down Palace. Like she would yeah. be, she's one of those girls. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Is the other one Kate Beckinsale? Who's the other girl? It's Claire Danes oh, and someone else. Maybe. Marissa Tomei. Oh, oh, it was Marissa Tomei. Yeah, Marissa Tomei. Tomei. 
<laughs> I'm looking it up. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know who it is. It is. It's Kate Beckinsale. Fuck you know yes. who else is in it? it? Who? Bill Pullman. Huh? huh? As Hank Green. When is he She's in the it? the name of my teenage crush. <gasps> Hank Green? Uh-huh. You had a crush on a 67-year-old oh, man. probably shouldn't have called that out. <laughs> 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 the full name. Wait, I'm just like, oh, wait, and here's his name. Wait, wait, what? What? Wait, what grade was this? Uh, I was 17. Okay, I'll I'll name I'll full name check one of my first crushes. <laughs> I've warned him that I've talked about him on a podcast. Okay, it's fine. I have also not his sister sp- apparently listens. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Hey, Hank said. Green's yeah, sister. Yeah, shout out to Hank Green's sister. Yeah. Um, thank you for listening. Thank you so much for listening. This is a shout out to my. Uh oh, you know what? It was late elementary school, early middle school, but he he was nice to me until I got glasses. Mm. Holmes Koo, this one's for you. That's a great name. Yeah, you Holmes. know what? I want to shout out to my boy. Uh, I think your name was Jeremy in the second <laughs> grade. Shout out to Jaron Statler. <laughs> shout out to uh Jaime Hernandez, I believe your last name was. Shout out to Ivan Perez. Shout out to Everett Hauser. Shout out to Hank Green. And that's the end of my uh your shout outs. Unfulfilled crush list. Man. Shout out to all their sisters. No, wait, that they're yeah, listening thank you for their sisters I'm for listening. Sorry. Jeremy, Jaren, and Jaime were all my boyfriends briefly. Really? In elementary school. <gasps> and then you had as soon as I school hit, boyfriends? Yeah. I could I was not I was not allowed to have well it was girlfriends at that point mm-hmm. but uh I wasn't allowed to have girlfriends Me neither. like parents were like not until you're 16 can you oh. like go can you date Jaren was my boyfriend for literally weeks really that's, <laughs> that's a, long a long time, time. we got each other christmas presents why mm-hmm. dang that actually yeah. sounds like a really fulfilling but elementary then school i was told that my friend Lacey like got us together as a joke wow and then i said yes and like it she was like kidding or something but then like so then he had to go out with me or something but then like when we were supposed to go on a real date to see beauty and the beast they were in mexico together and then she was telling people she saw his butt what is that how it ended yeah good for you for breaking it off though after she saw his butt i do not remember who ended it <laughs> it might have been he, him. He came back and he's I like, forget. I have something to tell you. <laughs> or I think it was <laughs> Stacey like, saw my butt. <laughs> when, when we were supposed to be seeing Beauty and the yeah, Beast. Uh-huh. I was in Mexico. I was in Mexico That's a pretty with big... your best friend, Lacey. Wait. Oh, Lacey. I'm so sorry. Yes. Why were they in Mexico together? Family friends? Family friends. You can't you can't get in between those family friends. No, that's it's the hard. problem. It's really hard. Well, I think that that's what the joke was, is they were probably flirting about being together. And then she was like playfully like... Or I could get you together with Lindsay. I'm going to call and see if she's like into it as a joke. And then she was like, would you go out with Jaren? And I was like innocently in my house going, I guess I would. (laughs) (laughs) And then suddenly I had a boyfriend. Wow. Mm. I believe I was being made fun of, though. And that this is why I didn't see anyone uh, junior high through high school, because anybody who showed any interest, I was convinced they were making fun of me. Mm. I mean, you get scarred by so stuff thanks, like that. So thanks, Lacey and Jaren. I hope they're happy. Are they together now? No. Do they, uh-huh. But they're both married separately and I believe have children. Mm. Well, good yeah. for them. Well, I mean, good for them. them. I forgive good for you. them. I forgive you. Forgiveness is a gift you give yourself. It is. Um. Okay, so what else happens in this book? The ship Everyone sinks. dies. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, Everyone. What else happens in this book? Oh, <laughs> um, the ship sinks. The ship sinks. <laughs> Everyone dies except for like our f- five friends. Sorry, can we talk about the end? Uh, yes. When Max is revealed to not be dead. Yeah. I was so angry. So Elizabeth gets yes. on like the rescue ship, yeah. and she's looking for Max, and Max isn't there. But she hears that there are some people in the infirmary, so she goes to the infirmary, and there's a paragraph. Where she's like, I shouldn't have hope. And I know I shouldn't have hope. Everybody on this ship has hope. And then she sees him. And it is actually him. After I thought he was dead. I thought he was dead. Here's what I I wanted to happen. When she's like, and then I saw him. I wanted it to be her dad. Because I thought that would have been a win. Like having your cake and eating it to a situation. Where Mm -hmm. it's like, you thought Max was going to be alive. And I did give her someone. But it was her dad and Max is dead. 
I would have liked and that. And then she goes to Vassar and she becomes a journalist. Yeah. It would have been cool too if we start the sentence with she so she or we start the that part with her being like she thought she would go look for him. And so the whole time it's just him, him, him. And so you're assuming it's Max. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then it's dad. And yeah. dad's fine. Or it's Brian. And she's like, that she also, and, and she's, she's like, like, do I know you? Yeah. She's like, oh, that guy looks kind of like, familiar. Oh, aren't you my b- girlfriend's boyfriend? <laughs> but it's Brian. I love Katie, but I know she's with you. <laughs> and then there's all going to be pages and pages of them arguing about it. <laughs> the part I, so they get together they're all happy. And then they have another one of my pet peeves, which is one of those like cute misunderstanding, haha, funny conversations that don't actually happen in real life where Elizabeth is like, so I'm not wasting my uh, wasting any time doing things other people want me to do. Not even my own mother. I don't know exactly how I'm going to Ugh, manage it, I but I am going to college and I'm going to choose my own friends. One of Max's eyebrows lifted toward the sky friends that's all i am a friend do you know how cold that water was elizabeth and i swam through it to get to you surely i deserve more than friendship for my efforts elizabeth laughed you know you're more than that i hate that not hate the place them. or time no yeah no also like he is like basically dead right now he's like <laughs> yeah. he I thought he was gonna be forever changed i thought so too and that would have also that would have been cool i would have just like a haunted shell yeah and then he's just like traumatized and has ptsd and she has to like kind of like help him get back to himself but he's like fine he just has to wear like two coats for a while well he gets a cough Lindsay. he does get a cough and his (laughs) eyes are red rimmed i know and his skin is great yeah, I also like He's that it was cool. hot cocoa. That that's what they are bringing around. I know. I was it's like, why hot, not tea like or hot Swiss water? Mist? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See, little packets of Swiss, <laughs> like tiny like little, little marshmallows, yeah, like, marshmallows. like, like on top. It's like one of those big Saint Bernards with the like collar that's a little barrel full of whiskey, and then a bunch of Saint Bernard puppies How just cute. like that's drop adorable. out and they all, like drink out it of the barrel. It was a steamship bringing a shipment of Saint Bernard puppies. Oh my God. <laughs> and they're like, oh, you're lucky. It's the training ship, and all the puppies. Are training and they're kind of bad at it. It'd be so cute, they're, like slipping around. And they're on the trying deck. to like learn yeah. how to like open doors and yeah. yeah. But their ears and their paws are so big. They're so big. So big. You know Too they're big. gonna be big dogs. Yes. Uh, but they're they're gonna be they big dogs. Grow that think them. they're little dogs. <laughs> <laughs> and they're friends with ducks. Oh, <laughs> just cause and an owl and an owl. But no, that's um, not the case. Unlikely friendships in the animal kingdom. I love unlikely friendships in the animal kingdom. So good. Um, but that's not what happens. Instead, it's just like some people save them and, um, they get hot chocolate. And then, okay, what was the purpose Mm -hmm. of them arriving on American soil and Patty? Oh, I need to tell you guys about a part where I, that I hate it. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. That was the purpose. That's why. Mm -hmm. So they, everyone's getting off of the boat and they're on American soil and, um, all of these uh, reporters are like trying to I- interview everybody because they're like, oh, the survivors of the Titanic and the last people to get off the boat are the third class passengers and nobody interviews Patty and uh, Katie, which is a good thing because Patty writes a book about his adventures. The Long Dark Night, I believe. It's called, I think it's called The Long Night. I think it's called the title of this book. Oh, no, I forgot. Got the title of the book. <laughs> I think it's that. And I may be wrong, but I became enraged. I was like, do not tell me that he wrote this goddamn book that we're reading right now. I'm so sorry. I jumped in on what you were going to say and I like hobbled the ending. I'm so sorry. I realize now that that's what you were building oh, to. Yeah. No, no, I don't care. The it's, but long I'm so sorry. Night. <laughs> that's so stupid. And that's the book you're reading right now. Is mm-hmm. it The Long Night or is it Long Dark Night? It's The Long Dark Night, which is actually, right, right. I find still, more annoying because the title of this book is The Long Night. Yeah. So, so like, like fake. So then go for it or don't. Yeah. Why now not she's just, just like pretending, it. like kind of fake half-assing it. Uh, it makes him super rich, though. Oh, my God. You're yeah. right. At the end, it's Titanic, The Long Night, a, a novel, and then remembering the Titanic. It's shown. Wait, so it's just going to be, is it just going to be them walking around remembering the Titanic? (laughs) Maybe it's a different character. No, it's not. It's not. I looked on Wikipedia. It (laughs) follows the same No, is it Molly? Why? Max? 
Elizabeth. Okay, but then what if now they're adults and then Elizabeth and and Katie have to like have a secret affair? Hell yeah, hiding it from their husbands. Oh, I love that. And then their I husband, like Max, um, Max is dealing with. Um, let's see. Oh, so uh, Max is with Elizabeth, right? So Elizabeth mm-hmm. starts getting like attention for like stuff that she's teaching at this school. Mm-hmm. So then their power dynamic is changing because Max was the one who was like more famous for his writing, right? Because Max wrote the story. No, no, no. Ma- Max, is a, Max, is a, Max, is a, Max is a painter who we learned was like fine, moderately, moderately successful. successful. <laughs> it's so, how she wrote it. So at first, like, <laughs> that's such so a diss. Funny. That's such a diss. <laughs> So he's like fine. He's like selling paintings, but yeah, he's used like, to whatever. being the he's artistic like one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then she starts like getting all this attention for something that she's like teaching. Mm-hmm. And then um, she gets a letter and it's from Katie who's like, you know, I I somehow tracked you down. Well, because yeah. I saw you in the I newspaper. I saw you in the newspaper. Oh, like, right, this, right, right. This brave teacher from America uh-huh. is like changing the way we teach kids. Or just like I walked around and I asked people, have you seen a pretty girl? She was in blue three days ago. <laughs> <laughs> and I I just want you to know that like I've never forgotten the moments that we shared on the Titanic. Yeah, I really appreciated <laughs> how you told your mom we shouldn't be down. To and, stop being such a yeah, cunt. To stop- <laughs> yeah, to stop being such a huge flaming cunt and then her and then uh uh elizabeth is like oh my do i am i gonna go to ireland like is that crazy that's crazy right but she's like oh haven't you wanted to like paint the like irish moors and then uh <laughs> Her husband is Are like Irish more or like Irish countryside. She's like, don't you want to paint like Irish castles? And he's like, huh, I guess I've never really thought about painting that. And she's like, you should do that. It'll spice up what you Maybe have to offer. It'll be moderately successful. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it'll sell he's, like a fair number of them. He's like, that sounds that sounds right to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he's like, that seems my trajectory. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So then I'm on that plateau. Yeah, he's like the Tom, he's like the Thomas Kincaid. If Thomas Kincaid <laughs> didn't like become like know. a he's like, like did not capitalize. Yeah, he didn't like capitalize. Is he the Wyland? Wyland is like undersea co- Thomas Kincaid. Who's Have Wyland? He's Wyland? Wyland? He's Mr. Like Wales. Oh Anne my god. Gettys. They're <laughs> insane. I I need you to see these Wyland pictures. I've talked about them before on the show, I'm pretty sure. Guys, tweet at us your favorite Wyland paintings. I don't know who this is. When you see it, you'll be like, I've seen these in like, um, you know, like touristy shops by the beach. Mm. Doesn't that seem like a great life owning a tourist shop by the beach? It's How like do they kinds. afford it? I don't know. Oh. Oh. They're like on postcards at the yeah. aquarium. He does a lot of like fantasy-ish stuff, like a little girl that's a mermaid. Oh. Um, yeah. So he's like the underwater Thomas Kincaid. Yeah, that's absolutely who Max is. Yeah. Max is like, his pictures are on postcards, and you're like, huh, I wouldn't normally buy this, but I'm at this museum, and I want to, like, get something to remember it. Yeah. So I'm going to buy this picture of this Irish moor. Yeah. I can't believe yeah. that she made him a painter just like Jack, but rich. <laughs> just a rich Jack. Just a rich Jack who lives. It's no wonder this book was enormously successful. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who hasn't heard of How Titanic? How <laughs> Poor Diane. Diane, listen, we love you. We love you. And we Everything know. Everything on this podcast is in jest. It's in jest. Um, and you know what? We know love. you love the Titanic because you wrote two books on it. Do, yeah. you, do you want to know what the actual plot of Remembering the Titanic is? Yes. yes. Tell us. Okay. So uh, the book deals with the lives of Elizabeth, Max, Katie, and Patty after the sinking. It's been one year since the night of the Titanic. Don't uh, you look at me. For the survivors, it's a constant struggle with grief, blah, blah, blah. Um, though he refuses to speak about the terrible night at sea. Katie thinks Patty is happy. Patty can't stop thinking about what more he could have done to save his brother. Sure. Uh, Max has embraced life as an artist, but he's losing patience with Elizabeth, who was, oh. having, who was having trouble finding her independence. What? Uh, when yep, Elizabeth cause... sees the dark, brooding paintings Max has been working on furiously, he knows the, that Max is wrestling with the same problems as she is. Life for the Titanic survivors has oh been God. anything but easy. Will the plain and she... sadness of that disastrous night be with them forever? Question mark. I mean, she does yes, exactly it will be what we're talking yeah. about, forever. though. 
Yeah. She totally addressed everything we we're saying, which is like, they would be so traumatized. They're traumatized. And here's the thing. like, <laughs> Good on her. When Katie's like, I think Patty's happy. But he like literally cannot say one word about the night of the Titanic. She's like, he's probably happy. That's totally he's Katie. Brian. That's so Katie. That's like, so Katie. <laughs> Brian went dead. And she's, she's <laughs> at the end, she's like, we'll mourn him, of course. But <laughs> uh, I think you're going to do a little more than just like. It's, like, not your standard bereavement, Katie. Also, like... You were on the Titanic. You are on the fucking Titanic. And you <laughs> abandoned him. Oh, no, like, literally, and lived. you and your lover abandoned his brother. <laughs> like, you're like, okay, I totally accept this in, as an answer, that you're going to stay here to help save people. Yeah, it's not like he yeah. died of old Thank age. You so, you're such yeah. a good person. Also, we're just going to find a, a boat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she. Uh, he's like, I think I'm gonna. She's like, Oh, you're gonna stay? <laughs> okay. And he's like, No, he's I was like, gonna leave. No, I, I was gonna... Meant, Oh, that's so he's good of you. So you're brave. Such a good okay, person. you just stay here. Okay, and, I'm gonna. Like... I'm gonna find Patty. And he's like, uh, He was helping me. She's like, Well, I'm gonna make sure he stops doing that. <laughs> she's like, Well, I gotta put the stop to that. But like, because I love him, and I'm leaving. Also, we get inside of Patty's head, and he's like. You know, he was sad that his brother was dead, but he was really happy to be with her. And so that's what he was going to focus on right now. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> like, I'm just, everybody, everybody in this book, um, they're just so optimistic. They're just like <laughs> really plucky. They're like, you know what? I'm just going to focus on the good in life. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why they didn't name Molly Brown unsinkable because everybody in this book unsinkable. is unsinkable. Yeah, it's true. They're it's not going to let a little thing like the most traumatic way to die get in their way of happiness. Of happiness. Mm -mm. They have to find their fortunes like in America. What would be a worse way to die? I think fire. I think fire would be maybe like, a worse way to die. Maybe being like in the Donner Party. I don't think that's as scary. Having to eat your dead No, it means that you might family. live. <laughs> But I mean, like, because you're getting stuck in the same kind of cold. Yeah. Um, and I they've just, already died. Yeah. I I just I, I would say but it's like oh, there's hope. For I me. recently listened to uh, Thanks, last sis. podcast's like entire discussion of the Donner Party, mm -hmm. and it is like really fucked up. Like they, um, everything that they that could have gone wrong did go wrong, and they like would wake up, and then there was like 20 feet of snow, and then they were like, oh, oh we're gonna die. And then, like, groups of, like, they had to try and make um, snowshoes. And, like, one guy just, like, died slowly because his arm just, like, rotted off. And then oh my God. they would eat other members of the party only to some of them just die anyways. And then, like. Oh, so then you ate somebody for no, for no reason. reason. I feel like any time you know you're going to die and you're just waiting for it to happen. That's the fucked up It's, like, up the part. absolute worst. The thing that was really fucked up, and this is not involving a death, is that the little kids, because they're so young, they ate people and then they thought it was normal so like later on they're continuing on their journey and a little thing goes wrong and then they're like oh well we can just eat him oh my gosh and then the adults like later on were talking about it and they're like there was there's no coming back from that like those kids are fucked up i actually this reminded me that i bought because it was way discounted i bought a book called the indifferent stars, stars above. above the harrowing saga that, of the donner party so, uh they highly recommend that book and also the title of that book is the bleakest fucking thing yes. in the world <laughs> that is so and the indifferent the stars, stars above. above that's so fucking sad also kind of applies to the titanic totally mm -hmm. totally yeah i think yeah anything maybe because the donner party it lasts for so long or is it at least with the titanic like it's just the one night I, I guess, guess that makes it guess. slightly less traumatic. But like yeah. the boat, you're stuck in the middle of nowhere. So yeah. even the people in the lifeboats are like, this might be it. Yeah. I might just freeze to death. Yeah. That is so scary. scary. And it like sucking you to the bottom of the ocean. Oh, oh. yeah. You yeah. know what? That I, was scary. If I had my choice, neither. <laughs> yeah. If I'm choosing choose either. If I'm. Yeah. Maybe this is just me. But if I'm uh -huh. choosing, mm -hmm. I die in my sleep mm -hmm. with my like husband dying uh -huh. at the same exact time. Oh, and yeah. we're very old, very, but like very, not very like old. so old that like we can't like live our normal lives. You, you know, know like we're it, in good health. Yeah, there there was no but, extended sadness. I would say oldness. like right. exact same for me. Like 
That's in so my sleep crazy. With your, your husband. husband. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you Can't just believe. strangle Lindsay. <laughs> uh, what do you th- your yeah. husband? Uh, what do you guys think of Elizabeth's mom? Oh, Nola. Whatever. Here's the thing. Uh, I I was like, you are such a nothing of a character. She, yeah, she was. She was kind of a nothing. I. Here's what I thought, and maybe this reveals my own issues with my own mother. <laughs> I was like, this bitch is not going to change forever. She's going to like, mm-hmm. she's going to come back. Elizabeth says She that. says that, but I'm like, girl, it's going to be quicker than you think. And like, it's going to be a hard turnaround. Like, she'll be okay with you being with Max for like a week. And then she's going to be like, yeah, but Alan. Also, I totally, when I was reading the book, I, when they were like, oh, he's 10 years her senior. I was like, oh, that's not too bad. And then it was like, he's 27. I was like, oh. Oh, I know. <laughs> I was like, I no. Know. Like, I know these books are aimed at like teenagers. And so it's like, oh, 17, how grown up. Mm-hmm. But it still weirds yeah. me out. I was like, ew. 17 I, and 27, no. Once it got to that point, because I had been picturing such an old gross man, <laughs> I was like, oh, he's only 27. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's great. Okay. But, That's not a big deal. I mean, I'm not saying she should marry him. I'm just saying that, like, he could have been, like, 43. Yeah. yeah. I thought he was, like, fucking old. Yeah. I didn't think... So, here's the thing with, like, the both parents is that it's not like I I don't agree with them, but in these kind of books, you, like, really want to, like, hate the parents or you really yeah. want Elizabeth to be, like, right. And you're just like, yeah, of course Elizabeth is doing the right thing but they kind of i feel like the whole book like kind of like split the difference yes. where too much i was like no the parents are like actually kind of sensible yeah and they're just like of their time they were yeah. very of their time and every time the mom was like you would not be good at being poor i was like you are right she would be yeah and elizabeth terrible. knows she'd be terrible She's like, at yeah it. i know that that is continually funny to me <laughs> that like elizabeth's like yeah i don't think i could hack it <laughs> It is, like, I, which I is kinda, why I kind of need the money. Such, like, I don't yeah, want to piss like, my parents mm, off because I need their money to do what I ooh, want. Like, uh, it, mm, yeah, I I think I'm doing a bad job of saying no to them because, like, I don't want to say no to them because I like money. Also, okay, Max, I get it. You know, you want to be this like bohemian artist. You want to live this like very you know, in and out life. But also, like, you could just go to art school. Like, a lot of people do it. It might make you better. Yeah, mm-hmm. just listen to her. Yeah, maybe. Like, maybe it's because we come from a generation at this point that, like, there's no such thing as selling out to us. Like, oh, no. We do no. a podcast where we, like, tear apart other people's art. <laughs> yeah. And for money. So <laughs> we get... And we advertise yeah. It. yeah selling out is the ultimate goal now yeah where you're just yeah. like i would oh, love to me. sell that's out how do i sell I out i watched rent and i was like these people are infuriated oh my god yeah like benny is trying to start a business centered around the internet he is the future yeah, yeah. pay your fucking mark rent. is the absolute Take that job at mtv character. for fuck's sake mark is terrible. mark is the worst he is trying to capitalize on the pain of lgbtq People that he is friends with. Fuck Mark forever. Wow. I haven't right? seen Rent recently enough oh my to God. know what you guys are talking about. He is about. insufferable. It has not And they made well. a huge mistake casting the original cast of the musical. In the movie? Not only that, not only are you already against these characters because they are so of their time and that is not how we live now, but you're also watching like people in their mid 40s do this <laughs> and right being like we're like 19 and <laughs> i'm sorry like, anthony free Rapp. Spirited. No. <laughs> <laughs> like you are not la vie bohem <laughs> it's unacceptable <laughs> like tay diggs is in the right <laughs> <laughs> and adina menzel that is not art mm. yeah so the whole so that's my takeaway that's, that's your takeaway <laughs> The so the whole thing was right that if he went to college, he would get money, right? Maybe it's just like I, I you can have both. That's what I thought. You can have that's, both. That's why I was like, dude, like, just like make them happy for a little bit and then do and then get like, some money and then fuck off and do whatever you want. Yeah, like what do you think an apprenticeship is? Yeah, for an artist, <laughs> like 
That's what art school is. Mm -hmm. Go to college. You ding dong. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, like it, it it was very like he was just like, well, I'm not going to do that because I want to just paint stuff in my house and be successful. Especially with know. like the benefit of hi hindsight where again, we know that he wasn't very like he was just fine. He was fine. Yeah. It's like, oh, actually, maybe you should have gotten that training. Yeah. That's what I think. He wasn't some. You were a moderate success. Yeah. yeah. He, he was not like a born. I would have loved he to see what not, his paintings were He like. was not an iconoclast. He was not like Jackson Pollock no. or, or like. No. Um, Rothko. <laughs> I was trying to say Picasso. And I was like, or Pablo Jackson. Neruda. <laughs> or Pablo Neruda. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, poet, poetry is an art. I bet, sure. <laughs> I bet Max was really good at like copying the classics. Yeah. Yes. He should have gotten into forgeries. He should he just, have gotten into forgeries. Or is it forgeries or fakes? Because remember, there's a difference. Like one is if you recreate, uh, uh, if you recreate existing works, and then one is where you use the artist's actual style to create a painting that oh. could be theirs, and then sell but it. That as if must it's be there. a fake. Yeah, that, fakes I, are much smarter. And, and yeah. so I don't think Max. I think Max yeah. would be forgeries. Forgery. Then. Yeah. I really want to see that movie. Um, it's something oh, like, with, like I Melissa hope you can Ma forgive me. Yeah, the one yeah. with Melissa McCarthy. I've heard it's really good. Yeah, where it's like I a, heard it's really good. Yeah, yeah. I really want to see that. Yeah, struggling writer pretends that she's finding all of these letters from great writers, but she's just making them up. Yeah, yeah. I want to see. I want to see that. Let us know what you guys thought. Um, okay, what else do we have to say about this book? Um, it was uh, too long. It was too. long. It was a like, long night. Like, yeah, it was a very long night because w while the sinking is happening, there is uh, n not – it's a lot of the same thing just happening yeah. like over and over and yeah. over. Yeah, because like that's made up like 40% of the book. Yeah, I was surprised when it happened. I was at like 70% in my Kindle and it's like, oh, we're going down. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, what could possibly happen well, for this long? I mean, I was just surprised at how – little story there was leading up to it me too which but made it, it like, so long <laughs> it's so long <laughs> which made it so that not a whole lot could be happening while they were sinking it was just literally elizabeth telling her parents at least 12 times i'm not gonna marry alan and then them being like that's cute that you think that but you're definitely marrying alan and then her storming back to over. her room she, and being like i need to Figure out a way to talk to them about it. That was my other favorite thing. Oh, <laughs> is that her how long she would figure, figure out, out how to talk to her parents? Because <laughs> like, she knew that she, she could wear them down. To them. That's what I loved is that she was like, I just need another year uh, yeah. <laughs> to get that and I can wear them down. Yeah. Because I will ask them so many times yeah. that they'll finally just like give up. Just don't make me marry Alan. Let's figure this out. <laughs> she also Which is so funny. Fair. And it's also ridiculous that her parents are like, no, because like they can't force her. Yeah. Like they don't I have mean, to right. just cut don't have to pay for college, but like you can't make your daughter marry somebody in 1912. Yeah. That's not how it works. I guess they would just cut her off monetarily and they know she's not saying goodbye to that money. I guess. But she also like does a lot of um locking herself in her room. Yes. And I thought that was gonna be something. I, mean, she's I thought a little teenager. She yeah. is. She, yeah. she locks herself in her quarters a lot. But um, she's sensible because she's like, I'm not going to slam the door even though I want to. And, oh, yeah. And she's like, oh. well, I guess the way that lock clicked was satisfying was enough. enough. <laughs> oh, that was so sad. <laughs> that was so weird. She's like, well, at least the lock felt pretty good. Remember when Max gives her anger management exercises? <laughs> oh, count to count to ten. Oh, Max, <laughs> you, you, you mentioned this earlier, but Max lectures her Too a much. Lot. Too much. Like four times. And yeah, because he sucks. Yeah, but he also doesn't suck as much as she act like acts like he sucks. Yeah, no, he's a drip. They're both wrong. She's like unacceptable, and I'm like, it's I mean, like, he was I annoying, mean, and I wouldn't to, hang out with him. All you have to do is say like, oh, I was just trying to vent. I wasn't looking for like solutions. The only solution I have is that I I need to talk to them. So. That's fine. I just want it to vent. Yeah. Like, but Elizabeth, you're, you're smarter such a than man. This. You're always wanting to fix stuff. <laughs> oh, my God. Here's the thing. This is why I was just like, why is everybody on the fucking Titanic so woke? Because like her and Katie and like all the other young people they encounter are like, which first of all, we don't have any reason as to why Elizabeth 
would think these things. She doesn't have any friends that we know of. She doesn't – like she seems to just have always been cloistered in there and all she knows is that she doesn't want to marry Alan. Mm-hmm. But she's like – how unfair it is that men get to do like all of these things and women um, are forced to do this. And, uh, and oh, oh, and then Katie also, she's like, oh, wouldn't it be bad if like women were as like acted like patty acts and blah, blah, blah. But like, oh, no, 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 no. It was Elizabeth. Elizabeth says when they meet Molly Brown, mm-hmm. she's like, oh, well, why is it that when women are allowed, they're considered brash, but men um, are considered uh, it's like boss versus bitch. Yeah, and so she's like saying all of this stuff that we're hearing today, and in this instance, it doesn't strike me as a. It's been happening ever since then, and it still hasn't changed. It sounds like she's trying to make all of these characters relatable to people today. Yeah, well, that's because like- I think Elizabeth would still be buying into the patriarchy, Wait, which I, I I agree, and I don't think it's inherently a bad thing, but it never pays off. That's the thing. Like it, ne- it never it's- like amounts to anything not really. it was just such a modern way that she's thinking it it's just very like basic excuse me my nose got so stuffed <laughs> up. i'm about to sound like i am like a six-year-old um <laughs> so like she's just so basic about it in a way that isn't like really fleshed out or dynamic it's it's like somebody sat down and went I'm going to write an enlightened woman instead of having a character with desires. It's it's yeah. like it's like trying to do the math backwards. You yeah. start with the solution and then you decide what the equation is. Or- yeah, like the way it's like haphazardly just like sprinkled throughout the book, it's almost like it was written uh without it. And then she was like this book needs more girl power. Yeah. yeah. And then went back That's- in and was like here's where I can insert this and here's where I can insert like little bits of it, but it doesn't change the arc of her character in like any yeah. meaningful way. I think so it doesn't. A, yeah. And there's definitely a, it's specifically girl power in here. It's not feminism. That's it's girl ex- power. That's what I was about to say is like, I think that's a really good way of putting it. It's like, there is a difference between like adult real world, real world feminism versus like plucky girl power in a book. And I would say th- the reason why I, I would have wanted – this is, again, just what I, would this book be in a dream, in my dream, is Elizabeth first – my dream. <laughs> is first buying into the patriarchy. Mm-hmm. And then she meets Katie, Katie. And then she, like, you know, wakes up and is like, oh, this was shitty and also I'm in love with you and, like, these guys suck and are very boring and, like, why don't we just have a dope life together? Hell yeah. That's a dream book. Do we write that book is the question. Yes. I mean, it is the, the yes. 21st anniversary oh, yeah. shit. of Titanic. I Let's wish, just hammer it out right I now. I wish I had thought to do this last year when it was the 20th, <laughs> but uh, here's when I thought of it, and uh, it happens to coincide with the date we release. <laughs> uh, I did not, like, hold on to this waiting for that all... 21 like that landmark 21st anniversary that everybody hits it's, it's that favorite number everybody loves 21. you can start you drinking can drink. when you're 21 yeah now this movie can drink oh yeah. let's take it out to vegas <laughs> Woo! what happens on the ocean stays on the ocean <laughs> nice international waters baby <laughs> um thank you so much for coming on the show mark thank you for having me um it's really fun yeah it was really fun talking with you yeah um do you have anything that you would like to plug i would love to plug my nintendo podcast nintendo cartridge society which Yay. i co-host with a uh, friend of your guys' show patrick ellers mm-hmm. low dunk correspondent guys i have said this before and i will say it again i love your show i think you guys are so funny and heartfelt and very knowledgeable and silly and uh if you guys are not listening to Nintendo Cartridge Society, you need to listen to it. It is really, really good. These guys are great. It couldn't be anything but a delight. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And thanks so much for having me. Oh, of course. It's so great to have you. Um, thank you guys so much for uh, for tuning in. Um, you know what we're reading next week? Do you know Silent off the top of your head? Silent Night. <gasps> Yay! Yeah. Fear Street, so, Silent Night. Mm-hmm. Super chiller. Uh, that's going to be really cool. Um Thank you so much to those of you who donate to our Patreon. If you want to get on board with that, we have tons of goodies for you. We've got mini sods. We're reading the book that Lindsay wrote in um, 
in junior high. Junior high out loud. I was um, fourteen and fifteen. I wrote a book parodying Sweet Valley High books. Do you Not like good. people meeting each other? This book is for you. Do you like people? Do you like teenagers getting on phones asking if they want to hang out and then driving to hang out and then when you get to hang out you just ask what the other person wants to do and you go i don't know what do you want to do this is the book for you this is the book for you um i will say the last time we sat down to read it though i was genuinely scandalized by events that occurred in the book i was screaming (laughs) i was like what but he's supposed to go with her couldn't believe it um so check that out that's uh minisodes and then we also um uh, have outside genre episodes where we cover a book of a listener's choice um, that falls outside of our normal genre. And uh, you also get photos of me with white girl cornrows. Um, mm-hmm. you and you also get plot summaries from me that I'm writing of all the books that we cover. And they are funny and informative. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so if you want to get on board there, that's patreon.com slash teen creeps. Um, oh, you also get stickers too for $5 and $8 people. Um, let's see. Anything else? No, I think that's all the biz. It's all the biz. Yep. All right. Thanks again to Mark Mitchell. Uh, and, uh, we will hang out with you guys next week. Keep it creepy. Forever. (coughs) Dog. This has been a Forever Dog production. Executive produced by Kelly Nugent. Lindsay K. Tai, Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. For more original podcasts, please visit foreverdogpodcasts.com and subscribe to our shows on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, 